Hey fellow pod dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you complete guide to dropping a nuke. Even if right now you know nothing, you will be a pro. After implementing all the tips and tricks, I will try to include everything from start to finish, how to optimize, how to do it faster and how to help yourself if you are relatively low level at this point. So first, you will need to be Enclave General to get access to those launch silo. If you are not Enclave General and you didn't even start Enclave Questline, abandon Waste Dump. It's the spot number one when you find some holotapes and you start relatively long questline to get into Enclave. Enclave, by the way, is here at White Spring Bunker, additional service entrance. After you are a general, you will be most likely using a service entrance. And then on the map, you have three locations for silo. It's site Charlie on the bottom. It's site Alpha on the middle of the map. And on top, you have site Bravo. You can launch from each of those silos. And after you launch from a silo, Silo will get closed for three hours. As well, if you launch, let's say, from Side Bravo and decide to server hop in order to launch again from Side Bravo, you cannot. Apart from Silo being locked on the server you are leaving, the launch for this particular Silo will be locked for your character for three hours. And that's important to know because you will be able to server hop enter the side Bravo again, do everything, but you will not be able to launch the nuke. So you will waste a lot of time doing that. You need to know only one nuke per three hours from a silo. Now, couple of things before you even go into the silo, you need to have in your miscellaneous inventory, nuclear key card. If you don't have any on you, don't go into a silo as you will waste your time. And I would recommend to have at least two key cards because if you mess up with a launch code, you will waste a card. So better to have a backup. Second thing, it's under the holotapes and it's called Missile Silo State Holotape. Activating this particular holotape will show you which silo is available for a new clutch. They all says zero hour, zero minutes. So on this server, I have every silo ready to launch a nuke. This is important. It will save you time jumping and fast traveling from silo to silo if those will be locked. If you don't have either the nuke card or this holotape, you can obtain those from Enclave. We'll enter through the White Spring service entrance. That's the service entrance from the White Spring. I am a general, so I have all the access. Now from this point, the shortest way to get into the command is, as you can see, just follow this path. There it is, military wing. And now, if you don't have a nuclear keycard, there is terminal in here. You access it and you can initiate search for a nuclear keycard escort. Then you shoot the drone and loot the card. The nuclear silo code pieces, it's a different story. It is very long if you decide to crack the code yourself. As well, codes are refreshing every week. Alternatively, you can just go to nukacrypt.com and there are all the codes updated every week. I'm lazy. I'm always checking just on the website. Now, if I choose to initialize the search for nuclear keycard escort will be processed. And now, as you can see, hide and seek and destroy. I have additional side quest popping up. And if I will look on the map, it will show me where the cargo bot is currently. And there it is. Recover a nuclear key card from the cargo bot. And this dot will be moving around the map. So that's a lot of chasing if you don't have nuclear key card. 
Luckily, player vendors quite often sell those nuclear keycards relatively cheap. Now, if we go towards the armory, if you don't have this holotape that I was showing, you can purchase it in here. Holotape category, missile silo state holotape. You can just buy it. And after you buy it once, you have it forever. So that's a good investment. And finally, we are heading to the launch site, to the silo, to launch a nuke. And in this shack, there will be a silo alpha entrance elevator. And if you are a general, this hand scanner will work. If it doesn't work, but you are a general, probably silo is in lockdown and you didn't check the holotape. When we enter, mission countdown alpha is started. Now, what I really recommend you to do, especially if you are relatively new, is either use a legendary perk, Master Infiltrator, or equip manually all the lockpick and hacking perks. It will help you a lot. You can do it without it, but it will be slower and harder. Why it will be harder? Because almost everywhere you can find those lock terminals. If I unlock it, I can control the turrets and some occasional robot. What I can do with turrets, there are several options. Remove targeting restrictions or deactivate. Remove targeting restrictions will basically change those turrets to shoot at anything, including friendlies. So you can see the robots are already dying. So without any fight, I can get those robots down. Now, if you find yourself a little bit too squishy and dying inside the silo, try to get all armor pieces with troubleshooter effect, which is minus 15% damage from robot per piece. If you will get all those pieces, you can basically ignore all the damage inside the silo. Now, the step in here is to find this blue card. It can spawn in multiple places. It can spawn in here, it can spawn in here. I can see another one. It can spawn on this table. There is so many spawn points for this blue card. You only need one. Then you swipe it on this ID card eraser. You erase the card. Then you go, follow me, in this direction, to the left. And here you have those biometric scanners. You will need to use them. I'm showing that because the mission is not exactly pointing you here. You need to figure out a little bit yourself what can be tricky early on. So there is no marker on this machine. Then it just gets scanned. I'm entering my power armor again. If you have power armor, it's a great improvement to tanking. So I don't even need a troubleshooter set. As, as you can see, I'm at relatively high level. So that's not a problem. The tanking is not a problem. And I switch off all the turrets. Now we use this terminal. We choose fabricate biometric ID. We got this ID. Now we are basically going back to the room with more computers. This time we have markers. You don't need to access terminal. You just need to swipe the card unless you want to read more about the instructions. And now we are returning to the first room and this grid is open for us. So I can run through. And now that's the part that makes it the most important that you have all those lock picking and hacking skills. Oh, one more thing I will show you. I'll step back a little bit as it's important to know that in this storage room, there is a door that will be able to open later on from the inside. That's a shortcut. If you die deep inside the silo and you open this door, every time you'll be able to just re-enter it. I don't even need to fight those robots. You can if you want. It's not mandatory. You can just run through. And now, here, the lockpicking and hacking helps a lot because I will be able to use it to basically cut all the run short. I just open this door and then use this computer, hack it and open next door. This way I'm completely skipping 
all the reactor fixing procedures like all those pipes here all the computer over there like all the stuff it says to you that you need to repair the reactor but it's optional you don't need to now at this point there is a shortcut but it's unofficial so i will not be using it but i will tell you about it i don't know if this will be always like that but basically if you okay not in power armor if you exit the power armor leave it in here change to first person it's easier you jump into this hole you can see it's quite a big gap between those crates if you place your power armor and yes you do need power armor to walk through this shortcut in here like in this spot just behind those crates maybe one step farther like that if i place it like that you can see i can press enter if i press enter i will be directly on the other side and i will be heading to the lunch room but i'm not using this shortcut now i'm just showing you there is a shortcut so let me keep walking forward i do need my power armor otherwise i'm severely over encumbered the beauty of late game you accumulate more stuff than you can carry and now in this room we need to destroy the mainframes my recommendation is bring any type of bullet explode weapon like this gatling gun as otherwise you will need to manually touch those mainframes oh and see those annoying turrets you can either fight those turrets or just access the terminal again turret control and switch them off as simple as that and all the annoying shooting is away now look how easy it is instead of clicking on one as look how slow it is if i want to do that you need to keep clicking on every single one or i just shoot the entire mainframe what's easier obviously shooting entire mainframe is way easier than going one by one and in this room there is important terminal this terminal controls all the turrets in the main room in here with plenty of robots so i like to use this terminal and switch off the targeting restrictions that's a lot of fun you don't need to do it all this stuff is optional but it's fun if i go in here i like to switch it off and then take a look through the window you can see all the turrets are go off assaultrons are fighting robots are fighting there is some crazy stuff going on and before i will be heading in there i destroy all the mainframes i already did i already did here i don't like turrets too much when they are firing at me so after letting them fire for a little bit by the way turrets are more powerful than robots so they will always win i switch off the turrets before heading in there deactivate and yes it's really fast for me with max out master infiltrator legendary repair cards and those locked doors i can open i'm heading in here it's almost peace and quiet uh, this terminal by the way controls the same terrace that i already accessed from inside so you don't 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 need to use it now i destroyed enough and those doors in here are open i can switch to my plasma caster for ammo saving there should be one assault drone on the way yes there is assault drones can go invisible so that's annoying for vats builds unfortunately and we are almost at the lunch prep right now We are heading in here at the same trick with turrets. If I just run across, there are locked doors. I open those locked doors. Close behind me. I don't want robots to follow. Hug this terminal. Oh, one open the door. Turrets control. And I take off the targeting restrictions again. So some robots will get killed. And this one I will kill personally in the meantime. Here you go. Can you hear those turrets? Oh, I cannot really look too much through the window, but there it is. 
all the fight going on. Fortunately, those turrets in here are firing at me because targeting restrictions, they fire on everything. On you, on robots, on any other stuff. After about 30 seconds of firing, I will access this terminal again and just switch off all the turrets. Turrets are off. Now, peace and quiet. There is, of course, this was one sentry bot. The trick is, if you target a fusion core, it's one shot kill and a lot of stuff. So, if you target fusion core in VATS, you're good. Now, there is no more important step in here. We need to remove all the damaged mainframe cores, fix them and install fixed. If you want to save on resources, if resources are important for you, you can find all the fixed mainframe cores, like this one, lying around in the storage areas. So you don't even need to fix it all. And here, as you can see, just on other side of the door, it's the shortcut I was showing you earlier. So you can go in here without any hacking, just open the door. And now this door to the storage room are open. Here is the shortcut. To the right from the shortcut, there is a workbench that you can fix those cores. And look at that, one fixed, another one fixed. So I can take it. I go craft option, then scroll down to quest items. And those are mainframe cores. I'm fixing 13 because I found Two already fixed and it cost me steel and circuitry so this quite an expense if you are a new player so maybe better to just find the cores instead of fixing them another important tip those are heavy so from time to time check your miscellaneous tab if you have spare damage mainframe cores and drop them if you open yo inventory scroll to miscellaneous sort by weight those are heavy so we'll get to the top you see 1.5 pound each i don't need those two damage mainframe cores now i take all the fixed ones and install on the mainframe slots there is 15 total after installing all the mainframes, we are using this terminal to open the door. Open. Door opens and we are heading to the final room. The same moment, straight in here, all those crates that you see, that's the shortcut with power armor I was showing you. So we will skip all the steps. If you use this shortcut and if this shortcut shortcut is intended to be used, it's hard to tell. It is proper by immersion standards as there is clear and big gap. Is it intended? I, I'm not sure. Now this terminal is a huge help. You can remove targeting restrictions from plenty of turrets at lunch prep room. And if you are launching on the live server, you can pay attention to units connected. I have 14, so that's all the turrets connected. That's a lot of turrets. On the live servers, if someone was there before you, let's say three, four, five, six, eight hours before you, and destroy those turrets, they do not respawn. So it can be less or none at all. I'm removing the targeting restrictions. So some fight will start. So you can see fight is starting in there all the turrets are firing oh this launch commander you can control launch commander too so that's cool not everything needs to be done but it's still worth to mention i can go and that shut down the launch commander look at that he's shut down see so yeah, i just switch him off just switch him off unfortunately you cannot switch off all the robots so other robots are fighting in there right now. Can I sneak in to take a look? Yeah, the fight is going on. There is some assault from fighting the turrets. Turrets fighting turrets. They shoot each other. Mostly everything killed. 
Personally, I do not wait until they kill everything, but I like to switch off the turrets. Taking down 14 turrets, it's quite annoying and a lot of work. So, as I do have max out Master Infiltrator, I deactivate all the turrets and then I don't need to bother with those. Now, we are heading in upstairs and there is terminal to start the lunch prep. Of course, we take care of the assault room first and we go to initialize lunch prep. It's down the last option. Initialize lunch prep. Launch prep and prep. now Initiate. what you do, you wait. You wait, All the robots will be spawning and taking the stations. And there can be some complications. First, if something like that happens to you, you need to know how to fix it. If this first launch control chief will get displaced, let's say you do not kill one of the Assaultrons fast enough, Assaultron will jump on this launch control chief and move it. Oh, go away robots, excuse me. Let's say it will get moved out of his station, like pushed in here or pushed over. I saw him once flipping out and falling down. If that happens, the launch prep will not progress. So what you need to do, just hide somewhere in the corner and let the bed robots destroy it. Then you will go into this room, to this terminal and spawn a new chef, a new chief, a new lunch chief. And new one will walk in here and take the place. Now, another handy tip. You can, if they are taking damage and you are afraid they will die, you can use perk friendly fire, even rank one, with any type of fire damage weapon to heal them. It can be the flamer, it can be chainsaw with flaming mode. I usually use using the chainsaw, I always have one chainsaw or me. So that flaming mode chainsaw, and that can be used to heal those launch control chips. If he will take a little bit more damage, I will show you. Oh, some other robots are having trouble. As you can see, more robots is coming. Three out of three. Another, that's propulsion <laughs> officer. And there will be more of them coming. Combat inhibitors are the weak spot for most of the robots, but not all of them. Let me equip just one rank of friendly fire. Oh, not you. No, you go away. They can kill robots real fast, so that's not welcome. Now, he did took a little bit of damage. I'm taking my flaming chainsaw. The flaming part is important. I just normally attack. And look at that. It's healthy again. So you can heal them this way, which is very helpful. By the way, flaming chainsaw is my recommended weapon for early to mid game, as long as you can support AP. So that's, that's a cheat weapon. It's so powerful. And at this phase, we are just waiting until the lunch prep will complete and protect the robots. And finally, when lunch prep get completed, you can launch a nuke. That's a lunch area. You can see here are the lunch chiefs, lunch area. You need to insert key card. Key card accepted. After that, you need to access the keypad and enter the code. I already did that, so I can't again. You only enter the code once a week per silo. So if you launch a lot, you don't need to keep code on hand. You enter once and you can see it's a message. I already entered a correct code. Then system armed, there's targeting computer and we are launching a nuke. You have three options for main bosses. So one of the main bosses, the newest one that spawned at Nuka World on tour, to activate this one, the Titan, you nuke abandoned mineshaft two. So it's this one. I can nuke like that. It will spawn the boss, but I don't need to nuke directly on the target. You probably saw that a lot, but I can not like that. That would be too far. 
I can nuke like in here. As long as the icon is fully inside the nuke radius, it will spawn the event. So Titan, abandon mineshaft too. If you want Scorch Beast Queen, you are nuking Fissure Side Prime. The same applies. You need the Fissure Side Prime fully inside the nuke blast radius. And finally, the last boss, the Colossus, you scroll up and it's in here, Mononga Mine. So you nuke. The best location, by the way, is nuking around here. So after you exit the mine, after the fight, you can run north and exit the nuke zone. That's one of the reasons everyone is nuking the target only barely inside the blast radius. Thanks to that, you can fight outside of the nuke zone. You don't need to deal with all the rats. So those are all the options for this nuke. I will be nuking Scorch Beast Queen because I am on empty private server and that's the easiest target to take down solo for me. So I'm nuking in here. That will get me the Scorch Beast Queen. Confirm. And that's it. From this point, you are done. You choose your target and when the nuke hit, event will pop up. If you are here now, congratulations, you did it. If it was a first nuke, huge congratulations. It's so satisfying when you launch your first nuke. And you can wait a little bit in here. This nuke will actually fly up. You will be able to see it. And look at that. The nuke is going up. We launched it. We just set it up. And yes, after some practice, all together will take you about 10 minutes to launch a nuke. So it will get fast. The first one can take more time. And if you will be exploring the silo, there is several cool teddy bear scenes to find. And now, thank you a lot for watching. I hope this video will be helpful and see you in the next one.